welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the one and only great Mystic Chamber of Commerce. And good evening, Kristen. Good evening, Suzanne. Uh, okay. All right. So we're past sort of the rainy, and now we are just into the heat, something that we want all year long. And now I that we're in it. summer here. I but love it. We are New Englanders, and we do have the right to complain, but we're not going <laughs> to complain about tonight's show because it's going to be a great show. So what's going on? Well, I'm taking my dog to the vet. And maybe that doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but there's a new vet in town in okay. Mystic, and she's having a grand opening on July 29th. And where is she located? Um, Northeastern Veterinary Care Center, and okay. she's right on Greenmanville Avenue, on White Hill, uh, uh, White Hill, White Hall. White Hall. Okay, so you it's know, a new vet. It used to be a vet, but it's now a new vet. It's a new okay, vet, and now right? it's a. It's yeah, it was an old vet, now it's a new vet. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we're having a ribbon cutting there. Or we're having, we're a having a ribbon cutting okay. and a grand opening from eleven to four. They're going to be open. They're going to be giving away treats. Um, if you have a furry friend, the I was gonna say, doors are treats for who? Usually open, okay. but for that grand opening, um, they just want some humans okay. there. So give us the date again. Oh, the 29th, okay. and that's the ribbon cuttings at 11:30. All right, great. And of course, uh, the Mystic Outdoor Art Festival is right around the corner. Right around the corner, the yeah. volunteer dinner mm -hmm. is the 26th, and Time to Cook is catering it. We are going fancy, so if you I didn't volunteer this, this year, one, okay? you are missing out, yeah. But you still have time to volunteer, so go yeah. on our website, mysticchamber.org, and push that button for volunteer, and you will be happy. It's a great way to spend the weekend in downtown Mystic. Right, and just a little, uh, you can get on our website, because they do such a great job. Kristen does a great job, but we are selling uh, tickets for the commemorative 60th Right? Yes, original we're selling piece. tickets for an original piece by Susan right. Noyes. Susan she Noyes painted that for yeah. this particular uh, out, outdoor art festival. And uh, tickets are at the Mystic Chamber. They are. I don't they know if there. I'm allowed to say how much they are. Well, They're cheap. It, let me just tell you something. It's worth, worth purchasing because yes. you get to uh, win, hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. the, the drawing to be announced in September, but mm -hmm. original artwork from our artist, local artist Susan Noyes. Yeah. So anyways, what else do we have going on? Because this is going to be a great show. This is going to be a great show. One of the things I love to do the most in the summer is um, go over to the Mystic Seaport Museum. Love it. Now, we're at the Welcome Center on 62 Greenmanville Avenue, so people come over and um, they think Mystic Seaport is the whole entire town, which mm -hmm. is fine with me, mm -hmm. right? Oh, but fine with me. Fine with me, but they don't have to pay to get into the town, <laughs> right? That's what they think. Like, do I have to pay yeah. to get yeah. into town? Yeah. And I should say, yes, yes, right. you do. It's thirty dollars, <laughs> and you pay here. And but I haven't done that yet. Anyway, so I love going over to the seaport, seeing what's new, walking around, uh, you know, ducking into some exhibits, and it's being big. on the water. Which and also, just want to remember some pro some of the programs also what? too yes. that um, they offer to the Mystic Seaport, and we we can get onto that in some other show because we are sticking with the water today. The water, the water, and it is my great pleasure uh, this evening to welcome Chris Kasorik to Mystic Matters, Vice President of Watercraft and Preservation and Programs. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to our show, and of course, David Childs. We're going to get to you in a little while, uh, the captain of the Sabino. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, welcome. As well. And so, Chris, you've been here how long? I think uh, six weeks now. Six this weeks. This is my sixth week at okay. the seaport. And this is your new position? Yeah, new position. Coming in to fill the place of uh, Dana Houston, who had the job for 39 years. So that's some large shoes to fill, and it's uh, exciting Learning, learning the ropes, so to speak. Learning the ropes. So, what was the, when you when you first came on to the campus, and it's the Mystic Seaport. Of course, you know about the the Mystic Seaport. What was the first order of business when you are the VP of uh, Watercraft Preservation? I just had to find out what all the people who work in my department do. I uh, mm -hmm. didn't actually realize how many there were, yeah. and. I'm still trying to get all the names down. Really, we with the Mayflower the project especially. Oh yes, we've got yeah. a lot of people working yeah. in that in that side of the the shipyard right now. Okay, and you like Mystic? Oh, love it! Uh, I've lived here for five years and really excited to uh, work here now as well because I was working as captain of a ship as far away as Argentina. So the two-mile commute to the seaport <laughs> is much better than the 13-hour uh, plane flight to Argentina. That's a lot of playing. That's a that's long a commute. That's a long commute. Yeah. So we are just happy to have him here. 
Uh, well, yes, our... and I also wanted to hear about uh, his circumnavigation around the globe. How did we, that take we, place? We, we practice that word, the circumnavigation <laughs> yes. around the globe. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, my background prior to coming to Mystic Seaport was uh, mostly commercial shipping, and mm -hmm. the other side of it was maritime education and training. But as a commercial sailor, I worked on uh, sailing vessels, training ships, tugboats, research ships, and uh, large commercial bulk carriers. And uh, on those bulk carriers, I actually got to the opportunity to visit 42 different countries by sea. And in doing so, went uh, around the world both ways. And what you discover doing that on a slow freighter is that uh, there's a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how long does that, something like that, how long did that take you? I'm just curious. With loading and unloading, about 90 days. 90 days? Around the days. world in 90 days. Yeah. That doesn't about. seem like a lot with the wow. loading and unloading. It seems like... Fortunately, the loading and unloading on those types of ships takes a while, so you get to spend a little bit of time in port, which is not so common in today's uh, shipping world. So these are the big carriers that have like the truck, uh, truck trailers? Some of those, on yeah. On the, the yeah. back of Yeah, them. yeah. Wow. So what's the, what was the favorite part of that, those trips? I Chris? liked seeing different places and seeing some interesting places. Uh, okay. I mean, we've got a lot of Africa. Um, mm -hmm. We visited North Korea, which mm -hmm. is wow. not something anyone Welcome ever gets back. to see. Are you <laughs> allowed to do that? <laughs> Live? So, you know, yeah. seeing, really seeing the world sure, really, yes. really makes it, you realize how incredibly wonderful someplace like Mystic is. Yeah, yeah. So you'll probably, as you get into um, uh, your job and feeling your way around, probably be able to share some of those stories as well because it sounds like you've just got a history of knowledge about all of this stuff around the There's world. There's some good sea stories involved. I'm now uh, you know, trying to gather some more sea stories involving uh, mystic seaport vessels. So. Right. So uh, did you log some of these trips in there too? Some uh, of your work? Yeah, did you do that? kept track of some of that stuff. Okay. And what are some of your initiatives uh, for the mystic seaport? Well, my the education side of my background and and uh, waterfront operations was at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy where I was the waterfront director for about nine years. And my theory there was the more time someone spends on the water, the more they're learning about the things that especially Mystic Seaport is trying to show. And it's easy to show what sailors did in a picture, but to get the feeling of what it was like to go on a whale ship or to go on any sort of vessel at sea, hmm. the way to do that is to do it at sea on a vessel. So I'm really hoping to... Uh, you know, expand those programs and try and get more people on the water. And get more people excited about it. And get excited about it, which, that part's easy. Well, it is. It is it's easy, at, especially at the Mystic Seaport. Yes. I mean, you've got a great product. And I always say, one of the most beautiful, that campus is the most beautiful campus. Well, and especially now, like, everything is open, everything is ready, the quad is there, all the events that are going on, and you can go in the evening as well mm -hmm. to some of the concerts that's what and I was talking the performances. About. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's so a what's, wonderful thing. what are you working on right now, and, and, you know, what's in front of you right now? Well, right now we're getting the Sabino ready for to start operations on August 2nd is our plan, mm -hmm. and that, after a two-year restoration, a... Uh, they say a ship is built in the last couple of weeks, even though it may take a couple of years. And finding those last little things and uh, doing all the safety inspections with the U.S. Coast Guard and getting her all up to spec, uh, there's a lot of running around and a lot of people getting a lot of little details done so that she makes a, a grand appearance. Great. So that's a great segue. Um, so the Sabino has been captained by David for how long? Um, about 12 years. I started out just here and there working for Dick Lotz and then when he retired I started running her all the time. And uh, the Sabino's been under repair for quite some time so yeah. I was asking you earlier what was it that you were doing in your off time? Did they let you hang around? Yes, I ran a tour boat, the Liberty uh, tour boat. We and that's out. at the Mystic Seaport, right? Yeah, the in, in Mystic Seaport. Mm -hmm. I ran 10 trips a day. Ten trips a day. Ten trips a day throughout the summers while Sabina was in the big red barn being rebuilt. Well, good. See, everybody else here has a big tan, right? And I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just a little bit of a complaint. With on the water. Um, well, we have a video here of the Sabino um, and what's been going on. I think we're going to play that and a little that, bit and then talk about seconds. that. Yeah. So, Dave, while we're on, here we go. Oh.
Vinyl is extremely important because it's one of the last remaining coal-fired steamboats in the country. It's been about a two-year project. Um, the worst spot of the boat was underneath the boiler and the engine where she hadn't been able to have a lot of attention. They did a lot of uh, framing and planking. The shaft tube had to be replaced. It's called a shaft log. It's at the back of the boat with an actual prop shaft. While we had the opportunity of doing woodwork, the boiler was out. We had somebody look at it, and um, they kind of made the call that it's best to replace it. We found a company, Potts, down in Delaware. They came up, they uh, looked at it, took measurements, measured absolutely everything, and we um, reverse engineered it that way. So we have a fire to create steam by heating water in the tubes of the boiler. And that comes across the main steam line to the engine. And that goes into the pistons to move the piston up and down to turn a crank. That eventually turns the propeller. So it's very similar to a bicycle, pedaling a bicycle. To see this and for the general public to come on board and actually see it in its original state as much as possible is extremely important because it just doesn't happen anymore. To be able to answer the bells, take care of the fire, talk to the public, um, it was really nice to get out on the water at the same time and really interact with the boat. Okay, I want Dave's job. Yeah, that's I okay. have the best <laughs> job in the I museum, bet. hands down. Oh my gosh, that is the best job mm -hmm. ever. Dave, just give the, the a little bit of the history of the Sabino and also why is it under repair? For just some of the, our, our viewers. Well, uh, she was first launched in 1908 and uh, she came to the seaport in 1974. So she's been running up the river, down the river, taking people mm -hmm. up and down, making them happy and telling stories for some time. And she had had some minor uh, restorations, but it was time for a proper restoration. And uh, they did. The hull is just in perfect shape. And with a brand new boiler, we're set to go for a long time. You must really love this boat, right? Like I do. She is such a, it's such an honor to be associated with her and actually be her captain is, is such a privilege. Now, do you have a nickname for the Sabino? Is there something that we don't call her? <laughs> her? No. I always refer to her in the feminine, but she is just a wonderful girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what do you think about that, Chris? <laughs> you can tell, and I have not ever ridden on the Sabino. I've yeah. been around the seaport for, for years, uh, living in town and visiting before that. I've never got a chance to ride on it. Super excited to go on it, and all ships have their own soul and their own spirit, and just uh, spending time working on her the last few weeks, you can tell that there's, uh, there's, a, there's an old soul in there, and uh, really excited to, to see her underway. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of people come through the Sabino, David. And so one of the, one of the, some, give us a couple of best stories. I mean, I see you with the little children there. I, Is it mainly do they ask about the, about her itself, or, or do they just take in the scenery? Well, they're amazed at how quiet she runs mm -hmm. yeah. because it's steam, right. and we recirculate and cool our steam. There is not that railroad swooshing of, you think of a railroad engine? Yes. It's so quiet and she whistles to us. Mm -hmm. She makes a squeaking whistle that is just, uh, so has such a wonderful rhythm. And you can feel her underneath the feet in, in the pilot house. Okay. There's a little throb to her as uh, she turns her wheel. And it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, I led all the children. I started doing this. Uh, I. Every kid that comes on board has a turn at uh, steering the boat. So I let them have a turn, and depending on how high they are, I give them a physics lesson Which uh, they need. as to what's yeah. going on. And to see their eyes open up is just wonderful. Now, August 2nd is when the Sabina is going to be available for, uh, to schedule to ride. Mm -hmm. uh, the trips are going to start mm -hmm. August 2nd, mm -hmm. and you don't have to purchase a Mystic Seaport Museum ticket in order right. to ride the Sabina, which is different than it was before. Um, we do want you to, of course, see the Mystic Seaport and to become a member, and then you can just go anytime you want. 
Um, but that is uh, happening August 2nd, so look right. out for that. Right. What is capacity on the, on the Sabino? 74. So, so she small, came to right? us in 74? Is that what you, did she come mm -hmm. to us in 74 or 70? Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it easy. easy I, ca I, I caught that. She came to us in 74 and the capacity is, is 74. Mm -hmm. Correct. So are there, um, is there down the road just limited to the people on the, on the at the Mystic Seaport to give them rides or are they going to open it up for rides in the future for people that, let's say, getting married on the, on the grounds? Uh, yes, uh, weddings uh, can be done. You can mm -hmm. charter the boat, uh, but she comes to when, and fro from the seaport. Yeah, exactly, yes. Uh, oh, but yeah. yes, uh, you can charter the boat, have it, parties catered, whatever you wish. Now, don't you have a, your own history with this, Sabino? Oh, well, with married, when I got married. Did you get married? I did. On so, the Sabino? well, that's the funny thing. <laughs> Is of that course. a true story? It, it, it's a very much a true story, but I got married in 1977. So uh, I had the Charles Morgan in the back. There was only two places uh, at the time to get married if you were born and raised in the Mystic. Okay? Did you throw him overboard? Is that I did happened? not throw him overboard, but, I the, I heard but that. It, no? it was close. Okay. But anyways, <laughs> there's only two places, and it was at the Mystic Seaport, and uh, uh, the other one was in, in Groton. But for my family, who was born and I was born and raised here, there was no other place to have your wedding. And so you had the Charles Morgan in the background, and of course the wedding party uh, in 1970 took a ride down the river and back. So it, it's that. something that's always been... Uh, dear to my heart, and when I when I heard that the Sabina was out for repair, I was like, okay, well, I hope we have the funds to repair that uh, beautiful boat because it's, she's beautiful and very much a part of our history, my history, and, of course, uh, the Seaport. Um, but, anyways, glad to see it back. And, you know, Chris, you've got to take a ride on that. I'm going to be planning to be on the first <laughs> ride for sure. Because that's part of, uh, Part of my uh, negotiations for hire was that I get to drive sometimes. Well, that's what I was going to say. So. If David Childs is not... <laughs> if Dave will let me. Well, well you got, I think you... <laughs> I mean, he's the captain of that like, ship, if yeah. I, you know. But is there somebody that takes over, Dave? If, if is there... I don't know, work seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> but there's got to be, I mean, there's obviously, you've got training and you've got your, I mean, is, that's important. You Absolutely. You to drive that. Safety is yeah. number one. Okay. Is the coal guy like the position that nobody wants? They're like, you know, you're going to be the coal guy today. And they're like, no, I don't want to be the coal guy. Does that happen? Or is everybody no, love it? No, they're licensed engineers. The same guys do it. And they're, yes, oh, really? we have uh, two full engineers and an apprentice that's learning. Oh, wow. That's so, key. It's just to have an apprentice, you know, to at least. Mm -hmm. We have be able to keep to take perpetuating over. it on. Right. And we have to have more captains than just me. Mm -hmm. I love what Dave said. He doesn't work seven days a week. Well, when I go on and I want Dave Childs. <laughs> because well, the river is so busy this summer. There yes. is so much going on on the river. Um, so um, your job sounds, first it's, it's preservation and the waterfront programming, right? And the rest of the boats. And the rest of the boats. Like So the Charles Morgan is under your purview? Mayflower. Mayflower, we're... She's not on the river yet. That's right. uh, we have two more years of that project, a little less than two years. Uh, we'd love to show off what we're doing there. She's in the big white tent. If anyone wonders mm -hmm. what that giant white tent Can't is. Can't miss it. Mm -hmm. Can't miss it, except on a cloudy day. Yeah. It fits right in. That's funny. But uh, it's pretty neat to see. We've got uh, three sides of it open now, and then there's a uh, actually a webcam inside. So anyone who has a, a smartphone or anything can pull up and see what's going on inside the ship when the, the crew's working on it. So there's some pictures of it now. Um, when you look at it, it's so when it goes in the water, it looks it small, be. and you think, I can't believe that people actually fit that. In that is, is the but when it's That's up on the, the look at that. props, it's so huge and it's so tall. You know, I take it back, Dave. I like your job, <laughs> but Chris, this is so exciting. Rebuilding you, a ship. Like yeah, that is it's. I mean, really I, neat. You've seen a lot of things. I mean, you've been around the world uh, twice here. What is the most favorite part of the Mystic Seaport right now for you? Getting my hands wrapped around the shipyard, it's really neat watching a tree come in through the gate. And in a matter of you know, an hour, 
it can turn into one of those giant frames that we saw inside the, the ship. And uh, some really skilled shipwrights that measure a piece in place, uh -huh. go out and look at a log, find one that'll match, bring it in through various saws, and it comes out in this beautiful shaped piece of wood that they then fit in. And you just watch day by day as each of the frames in the hull are replaced. And it's sort of slow motion starting to look like a new ship. It's really neat to you watch. You know, that is amazing. I think I asked this uh, one other time on the, on the show as to where you, the, the trees are purchased. Uh, some or where are they come from? Some of the, come for the, from. those curved frames are actually uh, hurricane damage uh, mm -hmm. in the south. Uh, there's live oak trees, which uh, you know, the big draping, long branches that come down, which make great curved chip pieces. They're not very good for building a house, right? but they're perfect for uh, ship shape. So if there's ever a storm, we're reaching out to folks in the area that any down live oaks and we'll, we'll go down and get them. And then uh, other different types of wood for different parts of the ship, we will source some from the Pacific Northwest, some local, uh, some comes from Connecticut, some from New Jersey, uh, depending on which part of the ship. Uh, we've got some very skilled folks at the shipyard who know who to call to get that kind of kind of tree. But how do you gauge how many trees you would need to? to is that is, there's got to be some sort of formula there? I think it's a lot of uh, practice and mm -hmm. you know trial by error, and you've gotten to a point of lead shipwright, you can kind of take a look and figure out about how much wood you're going to need. What's hard is you can what, get what looks like a beautiful giant tree that you can't even wrap your arms around. And it looks perfect, and then they'll put it on the first saw and take uh, an edge off, and there'll be a, you know, a bugs or a, a hole inside the middle. Something that you can't you can't see inside, see, yeah. and uh, oh, you know, just go get another one. So that's yeah. that's hard to judge. Wow, that's it's like horsepower. Like how many horsepower in your engines would be like how many trees in the ship? Yeah, this but I, is I, I a like five hundred tree ship. I actually, Chris, <laughs> Kristen, I like what Chris. Chris just said, I mean, here is, you know, if you think about it through the eyes of somebody like Chris and, and Dave and, the, and some of the people, the, the great folks that work at the, the Mystic Seaport, I mean, here it comes, another log through the front gate. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many, where do you see that? You know what I mean? Where do you, how do you, you don't get, that's something, that's table conversation. You know, a tree comes in and we make ships. Well, that's what I'm wondering, too, if, is Chris, you saw the job posting and you were like, yay, I'm finally coming home, or what happened when you saw the, well, how did Well, uh, most of my background has been on uh, either steel chips or carbon fiber racing yachts, and I do have some time with wood, but that was my, a little, I was like, I, I got a lot to learn about <laughs> wood. But then again, <laughs> what's the best place you could go to learn about wooden shipbuilding right. is right there. So I, I'm, right. learning curve is steep, but I'm, I'm coming up to speed on it, and Again, a, a ship is a ship, and it's seaworthy, and uh, leading a team is leading a team. And I you know, think I've got the best team out there. You from, do, you know, and, and, and what, a great, you know, what a great way to learn about that, too, is the wooden boat show right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lost Chuck, who, who builds wooden boats, for the whole day. He said, I'm going to oh, be yeah. home uh, right around 4 o'clock or whatever. I lost the guy. That's <laughs> amazing. I, you know, because that is one of his favorite 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 events is the wooden boat show and you lose them for a couple of days it's it's fantastic dave how long does the sabina run oh uh, she starts in mid-may yep. and runs till Typically. uh columbus day which is the ninth this year okay and then you pull her out or you she's oh she stays in the she water she stays in the water mm -hmm. yeah wooden boats like water i know <laughs> i know well some people don't understand that mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's it's glad i'm glad that you uh, had the opportunity to tell people all about that but you we're still busy right up until october mm -hmm. yeah wow. full schedule right until the last day okay we have um some pictures too of other stuff that goes on in the waterfront i think let's um, show them yeah let's show those and then maybe you guys can talk a little bit well, about you, you them. mentioned uh, a wedding at the seaport yeah. on sabino and actually a year ago i got a little over a year ago, I got married at the seaport on Brilliant before <laughs> before I started working there. So uh, we share that. Yeah, congratulations! That yeah. I knew I liked you. Look at this. Look yes, at this. I, oh my gosh! On Brilliant, which is out, uh, she'll be back in a couple of days. She's out doing uh, sail training trips. Which, again, sail oh, training Chris. is, you know, that's the seaport is, you know, really getting an experience at sea. Uh, so we've got beautiful. youth groups doing that now, and then adults in the fall. How can you not be proud? Captain uh, Nicholas Alley oh, there is pretty spectacular. And summer camps, well, yeah. kids on yeah, the water yeah. sailing all summer. 
40 kids a week. And then we also started wow. a couple evenings a week uh, adult sailing. Really? At the, at okay. the boathouse. Okay. Did mention it a couple of shows maybe years ago, but that was one of the things that's a criteria as we were growing up is to learn how to sail and take lessons down at the Mystic Seaport. So there's a lot of us baby boomers that um, have a history with that too. I don't know. It was a, you know learn how to drive, go take sailing. Oh no, it was a, <laughs> learn how to swim, take sailing <laughs> lessons at the uh, Mystic Seaport, and then go get your driver's license. In that order. In that <laughs> sort of in that order. So when I see kids out on the water and out on the river, there it does bring back some uh, very very good memories. And so, well, I'll tell you, Chris. You have got a lot of work in front of you, but it's one of the best work you'll ever do. I can promise you that. It's been wonderful so far, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to make 39 years like Dana, but what? I'm going to try. You never know. It's kind of contagious hanging around the seaport. Yeah, it it you know? is. I mean, if Dana loved it so much, yeah. um, and I think he, to this day, it, it, it's his world. Yes. And um, I think that's a great tribute to uh, Dana Houston, who retired after 39 years. I mean, you got to... Pick and choose there, Chris, to see. But I think just from this TV show today, and I can see the excitement. You're ready to just take it to the next level, and um, we just appreciate you being here. Well, thanks for having me. And Dave? Thank you for having me. Uh, well, Dave, can you just tell me, uh, we just got a couple of minutes left. I want to know your schedule. Oh. Well. Because <laughs> I'm going. I leave Florida in March. <laughs> <laughs> On a boat to bring it up the intercoastal, and I live in the museum while I drive the museum's boat. And then I head back down to Florida after October 9th. What do you do down in Florida? Where I, are you? I babysit grandchildren. Oh, oh my gosh, David yes. Childs, that is just a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful story. And well, we're so glad to have you as well. Mm -hmm. And on the show. This is your first time on the show, right? Yes. Okay, well, we've got to have you back again. And as I said, Chris, welcome to Mystic. Thank welcome you. to the Mystic Seaport. I'm going on when that's back in the water, David Charles. I'm, like, I'm welcome, Suzette. Welcome. I'm right here. All and right. you're welcome to join me, Kristen. Okay, thanks. We are thanks the greater uh, Mystic Chamber of Commerce. This is Mystic Matters. We'll see you at the Mystic Seaport. Good evening. <laughs>